Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Tickets for our latest Mox Masters Tournament are on sale now. Compete for $2,000 in prizes and points towards our Invitational coming this October. Tickets sell out for each event, so pick up yours today. Merchandise is now available in our store. Go to Playing With Power MTG and help support the channel. You can also support us on Patreon. Patrons get access to our Discord, Webcam League, Play Days, early access to videos, names in the credits of the show, exclusive videos, the opportunity to watch our gameplay recordings live, and even the ability to be on an episode. There are tiers for everyone, so go to patreon.com slash playingwithpowermtg and help support the channel. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Alan, Pounding Shorkai, Genesis Engine. This is a stacks deck that aims to create card advantage with its commander, slowing down the game until an eventual combo finish. Alan's opening hand contains a Torpor Orb, Jeweled Lotus, Skull Clamp, Jataxian Probe, the Tabernacle of Pendril Veil, Mana Confluence, and a Cursed Totem. Next, we have Damien, piloting Tassiger the Golden Fang. This deck aims to control the board and recur value from the graveyard, and then attempts to cast big spells like Ad Nauseam or Seasons Pass to win the game. Damien's opening hand contains an Assassin's Trophy, Rejuvenating Springs, Mana Confluence, Toxic Deluge, Thassa's Oracle, Mana Crypt, and a Flusterstorm. After that, we have Kevin, piloting Ken and Bonder Prodigy. This deck loves mana and hopes to generate an infinite amount of it with the help of its commander and cards like Basalt Monolith. Kevin's opening hand contains an Ancient Tomb, Mana Vault, Long-Term Plans, Tropical Island, Fabricate, Talisman of Curiosity, and a Time Twister. Lastly, we have Catherine, piloting Prosper, Tomebound. This deck aims to use its commander to generate infinite mana and card advantage, then cast a Doomsday to set up a win. Catherine's opening hand contains a Command Tower, Deflecting Swat, Arcane Signet, Badlands, Mox Opal, Simeon Spirit Guide, and a Goblin Welder. Without further ado, let's kick off this monumental magical monstrous movement. Alan remember the most phases of mitosis and gets to start us off. Alan draws a card for turn and pays two life to cast Tachaxian Probe targeting Kevin. He looks at Kevin's hand and draws a card. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He plays the Tabernacle at Pendril Vale and then passes the turn to Damien. Damien draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts a Mana Crypt. He ends his turn. Kevin draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to cast a Mana Vault. He casts a Talisman of Curiosity. He taps the Talisman to help cast a Time Twister. Everyone shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and then draws seven. Kevin ships the turn. Catherine draws and plays a Luxury Suite. She passes. Alan draws and plays a Howled Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. He crafts his Jeweled Lotus to help cast his commander, Shorkai, Genesis Engine. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Damien loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays an Underground Sea. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He taps his Mana Confluence and cracks his Jeweled Lotus and then delves away Jeweled Lotus from his graveyard to cast his commander, Tassiger the Golden Fang. He casts an Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He ships his turn. During his draw step, Kevin takes a damage from his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he taps his Talisman to help cast his commander, Kenan Bonder Prodigy. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast a Felwar Stone. He passes. At the end of Kevin's turn, Catherine casts Vampiric Tutor, fetching up a card onto the top of her library and losing two life. Catherine draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. She casts a Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Catherine creates five treasures. She casts her commander, Prosper Tonebound. She moves to her end step, Prosper triggers, and she exiles a command tower. Catherine passes the turn. Alan draws and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He activates Shorkai, drawing two cards, discarding one, and creating a 1-1 pilot. Thanking the magic gods for his luck, he casts a Mana Crypt. The table groans as Alan casts the second Time Twister of the night. In response, Kevin comes to the rescue and casts a Swan Song. Time Twister is countered, and Alan creates a 2-2 bird. Alan sheepishly ends his turn. During his upkeep, Damien wins his Mana Crypt roll. He also pays for Tassiger through Tabernacle. He draws and casts a Soul Ring. He casts Toxic Deluge, paying 4 life as an additional cost. All creatures get minus 4, minus 4, wiping most of the board. He ships the turn to Kevin. During his draw step, Kevin takes a damage from his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he plays an Ottawara Soaring City as his land for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help recast Kennen, Bonder Prodigy. He passes. Catherine draws and plays her own Ursa Saga, also getting its first counter. She casts a Goblin Engineer. It enters, and she fetches up a Wishclaw Talisman into her graveyard. She ends her turn. During his upkeep, Alan wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a Sea of Clouds for turn. He activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Alan ends his turn. During his upkeep, Damien wins his Mana Crypt roll. He doesn't pay for Tasker through Tabernacle, destroying it. He draws and plays a Dark Slick Shores. He taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Ad Nauseam. In response, Kevin casts a Mana Drain, countering Adnaz. Dejected, Damien ends his turn. At the end of Damien's turn, Kevin casts a Worldly Tutor, fetching up a Seaborn Muse onto the top of his library. Kevin then casts a Nature's Claim, targeting Damien's Mana Crypt. Mana Crypt is destroyed, and Damien gains 4 life. The turn moves to Kevin. 
During his upkeep, Kevin pays for Kennen through Tabernacle. During his draw step, Kevin takes the damage from his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he adds 5 colorless through Mana Drain. He casts a Seedborn Muse. He taps his Ancient Tomb and his Talisman of Curiosity to help cast Consecrated Sphinx. He moves to combat and attacks Damien with Kennen. Damien takes it, and Kevin passes the turn. At the end of Kevin's turn, Alan casts a Chain of Vapor targeting Kevin's Consecrated Sphinx. Sphinx bounces, and Kevin doesn't continue the chain. The turn moves to Catherine. Kevin untaps with Catherine through Seedborn. During her upkeep, Catherine pays for Goblin Engineer through Tabernacle. She draws, and in her first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. She casts a Soul Ring. She activates Goblin Engineer, sacrificing a treasure and returning Wishclaw Talisman from her graveyard to the battlefield. She activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into her hand and giving Wishclaw to Alan. Catherine ends her turn. At the end of Catherine's turn, Kevin activates Kennen. He looks at the top five, putting a Paradise Druid onto the battlefield. The turn moves to Alan. Kevin untaps with Alan through Seedborn. During his upkeep, he wins his Mana Crypt flip and doesn't pay for his pilot through Tabernacle. He draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga triggers. He floats mana and sacrifices it, fetching up a Soul Ring onto the battlefield. He plays an Adakar Waste as his land for turn. He uses his floating mana to activate Wishclaw Talisman, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw back to Catherine. He casts an Isochron Scepter. In response, Kevin activates Kennen, looking for an answer. He looks at the top five and fails to find. With no other actions from the table, Isochron resolves. Scepter enters and imprints a dramatic reversal. Alan activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Alan activates Isochron, casting a copy of Dramatic Reversal, untapping all of his non-land permanents. He presents a loop of casting Dramatic Reversal through Isochron Scepter, netting infinite colorless mana. He casts Tezzeret the Seeker. He activates Tezzeret's second ability, where X equals 1, fetching up a Codex Shredder onto the battlefield. He continues the same Iso Rev loop, this time milling each opponent with Codex Shredder. He does this over and over until everyone has milled their entire library. Alan passes. One by one, each opponent attempts to draw from an empty library, loses, and Alan wins the game. In this game, Damien's opening hand contains a Force of Negation, Carpet of Flowers, Flusterstorm, Marsh Flats, Imperial Seal, Lotus Battle, and a Cyclonic Rift. Kevin's opening hand contains a Chromox, Rejuvenating Springs, Incubation Druid, Lotus Petal, Elvish Mystic, Mirage Mirror, and a Talisman of Curiosity. Catherine's opening hand contains a Verdant Catacombs, Praetor's Grasp, Forbidden Orchard, Gamble, Sensei's Divining Top, Jeweled Lotus, and a Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. Alan's opening hand contains a Codex Shredder, Brainstorm, Cyclonic Rift, Cursed Totem, Mana Drain, Chrome Mox, and a Cephalic Coliseum. And Damien gets to start us off. Damien draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He casts a Lotus Petal and passes. Kevin draws and plays a Rejuvenating Springs. He casts his own Lotus Petal. He casts a Chrome Mox, slightly surprising the table by imprinting Thassa's Oracle. He cracks his Lotus Petal to help cast his commander, Kinnon Bonder Prodigy. He casts a Talisman of Curiosity. He taps his Talisman to help cast Incubation Druid. He ends his turn. Catherine draws and plays a Vernon Catacombs. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. She casts a Jeweled Lotus. She cracks the Lotus to help cast her commander, Prosper Tomebound. She moves to her end step, Prosper triggers, and she exiles a Magda Brazen Outlaw. She passes. Alan draws and plays a Cephalid Coliseum. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Brainstorm. He taps Cephalid Coliseum to cast a Cursed Totem. The table says, eh, that's fine, and Alan ends his turn. At the end of Alan's turn, Damien cracks his Marsh Flats, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Damien draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts an Imperial Seal, fetching up a card onto the top of his library and losing two life. He ships the turn to Kevin. Kevin draws and moves to combat. He attacks Alan with Kennen. Alan takes it, and Kevin passes. Catherine draws and plays a Blight Step Pathway. She casts Magda, Brazen Outlaw, from Exile through Prosper. Prosper triggers, and she creates a treasure. She casts Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. She moves to her end step, Prosper triggers, and she exiles a Dual Caster Mage. Catherine ends her turn. Alan draws and plays a Plains. He taps Cephalid Coliseum to help cast an Arcane Signet. He passes. Damien draws and casts Mystic Remora. In response, Kevin casts Nature's Claim, targeting Cursed Totem. In response, Alan casts a Mana Drain, countering Nature's Claim. Mystic Remora then resolves, and Damien ends his turn. Kevin draws and casts Mirage Mirror. Mystic Remora triggers, and Damien draws. Kevin moves to combat and attacks Alan with Kennen. Alan takes it, and Kevin gives the turn to Catherine. Catherine draws and plays the Sulphurous Springs. She moves to combat and attacks Damien with Magda and Ragavan. Magda triggers and creates a treasure. Damien takes the hit, Ragavan triggers, Catherine creates another treasure, and Damien exiles a Fierce Guardianship. In her second main phase, Catherine casts a Sensei's Divining Top. Remora triggers and Damien draws. She casts a Praetor's Grasp, targeting Damien. Remora triggers and Damien draws again. In response, Damien casts a Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Praetor's Grasp. In response, Catherine casts Fierce Guardianship from Exile for its alternate cost targeting the original Flusterstorm. Remora triggers and Damien draws. Prosper triggers and Catherine creates a treasure. Fierce counters Flusterstorm and then she pays for the copies. With Praetor's Grasp still in the stack, Damien casts an Offer You Can't Refuse targeting Praetor's Grasp. With no other answers, Grasp is countered, and Catherine creates two treasures. She activates Sensei's Divining Top, looking at and rearranging the top three. She moves to her end step, Prosper triggers, and she exiles an Emergence Zone. She ships the turn. 
Alan draws, and in his first main phase, he has one paltry colorless mana from his mana drain. He casts his commander, Shorkai, Genesis Engine. Remora triggers, and Damien draws. Alan activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding Tezzeret the Seeker, confusing the table, and creating a pilot. He plays an Atacar Wastes, and then gives the turn to Damien. During his upkeep, Damien pays to keep his Romora. He draws and casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Inner's Saga. He passes. Kevin draws and then stares at the cursed totem with contempt. He moves to combat, attacking Alan with Kennen. Alan blocks with a pilot, and Kevin ships the turn. Catherine draws and plays an Emergence Zone from Exile. Prosper triggers, and in response, Kevin activates Mirage Mirror, having it become a copy of Mystic Romora until the end of turn. Then Catherine creates a treasure. Catherine moves to combat and attacks Damien with Magda and Ragavan. Magda triggers and creates a treasure. Damien takes it, Ragavan triggers, Catherine creates another treasure, and Damien exiles Wooded Foothills. In her second main phase, Catherine activates top, looking at and rearranging the top three. She moves to her end step, Prosper triggers, and she exiles Layla, the blade were forged. Catherine ships the turn. During Alan's upkeep, Kevin activates Mirage Mirror, having it become a copy of Mystic Remora until the end of turn. Alan draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He activates Shorkai, and in response, Kevin casts a Worldly Tutor. Damien's Remora triggers, and he draws. Worldly Tutor resolves, and Kevin fetches up a Trophy Mage onto the top of his library. Shorkai's trigger resolves, and Alan draws two, discards one, and creates a pilot. He casts Codex Shredder, and Kevin sinks his head. Both Remora's trigger, and Alan pays for Kevin's, and Damien draws. Alan activates Codex Shredder, targeting Kevin. Kevin mills his Trophy Mage, and the table cheers. With nothing else, Alan passes the turn. During his upkeep, Damien lets his Remora die. He draws and casts Teferi, Master of Time. He activates Teferi's first ability, drawing and discarding. He passes, discarding to hand size. Kevin draws, then activates his Mirage Mirror to make it a copy of Shorkai. He activates his copy of Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Kevin asks the table if Teferi's ultimate is bad, and the table responds by screaming at him. Then Kevin moves to combat. He attacks Teferi with Kennen. In response, Damien activates Teferi's first ability, drawing and discarding. Teferi takes the hit, and Kevin ships the turn. At the end of Kevin's turn, Catherine cracks her Emergence Stone, giving her spells flash until the end of turn. She casts a Wheel of Fortune. In response, Damien casts a Force of Negation, exiling a blue card, targeting Wheel. In response, Catherine activates Top, looking at and rearranging the top three. She taps Top, drawing a card and putting Top on top. Force resolves, countering and exiling Wheel of Fortune. Unfortunately disrupted, the turn moves to Catherine. Catherine draws and casts Layla, the Blade with Forge from Exile. Prosper triggers and Catherine creates a treasure. She moves to combat and attacks Teferi with Magda and Layla and Damien with Ragaman. Magda triggers and Catherine creates a treasure. Layla triggers and in response, Damien activates Teferi's first ability, drawing and discarding. Layla's trigger resolves, exiling Reign of Filth from Catherine's library and Layla gets a plus one plus one counter. Teferi and Damien then take the hit, Teferi dies, Ragaman triggers, Catherine creates a treasure and Damien exiles a demonic tutor. In her second main phase, Catherine casts Demonic Tutor from Exile, creating a treasure through Prosper. She fetches up a card into her hand. She casts a Reign of Filth from Exile, creating a treasure. She sacrifices two of her lands, adding two black. She casts a Doomsday. She fetches up five cards from her library and graveyard, exiles the rest, reorders the remaining five, and loses half of her life, rounding up. She moves to her end step, Prosper triggers, and she exiles Final Fortune. Layla triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. Still in the end step, Catherine casts Final Fortune from Exile. Prosper triggers and she creates a treasure. Final Fortune resolves and Catherine moves to her extra turn. Catherine draws and plays a Mana Confluence. She moves to combat and attacks Damien with everything. Magda triggers and Catherine creates a treasure. Layla triggers, exiling a Dark Ritual and getting a 1-1 counter. Damien takes the hit, Ragaman triggers, Catherine creates a treasure, and Damien exiles another Dark Ritual. In her second main phase, Catherine casts Jessica's Will, targeting Damien. She adds 5 red and then exiles Praetor's Grasp and Twin Flame with no other cards remaining in her library. Layla triggers and gets a 1-1 counter. Catherine taps Mana Confluence to cast Dark Ritual from Exile, creating a treasure through Prosper, adding 3 black. She casts Damien's Dark Ritual from Exile, creating another treasure through Prosper and adding 3 more black. She casts a Praetor's Grasp from Exile, targeting Damien. She creates a treasure and Catherine searches Damien's library for a card, exiling it face down. She then casts what she tutored, Thassa's Oracle. It enters, triggers, and Catherine wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great pair of games this evening. Congrats to Alan and Catherine on their wins. In game one, Alan bided his time until he was able to benefit off of Catherine's Witch Claw Talisman in order to assemble a combo while the rest of the table had no responses left. In game two, Catherine's unchecked Prosper was able to provide her with continuous value. She was able to cast Doomsday and seal her victory. Plus, seeing Thoracle in a Rakdos deck is spicy indeed. The most valuable card in tonight's game, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Prosper, Tomebound. While not winning the game itself, Prosper was able to stick on the battlefield and sneakily create extra mana and card advantage that ended up being a major part of Catherine's victory. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.